Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Leslie presents. And now your host, Paul Leslie. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, it's a pleasure to welcome Bob Vernon. We're going to be talking about Mardi Gras in New Orleans, an annual celebration with roots in medieval Europe that has been a part of Louisiana since the 1700s. Mardi Gras is now entering the digital age with Mardi Gras Live, a broadcast of video and audio that will unite people in a multimedia celebration that will transport people to the historic French Quarter in New Orleans and the famous, or shall we say somewhat infamous, Bourbon Street. Bob Vernon, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Paul. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. So for everyone out there, who is the real Bob Vernon? Well, gee, that's a tough question. Let's see. The real Bob Vernon is a uh, old redneck Cajun boy born and raised in Louisiana who has been in the entertainment industry for uh, 61 years. In a nutshell, I guess, to answer your question. So Louisiana... Most stories are best from the beginning. What was life like growing up in Louisiana? Wow. Boy, you're tough. What comes to my mind is, first of all, the food. My Lord, best food in the world. I mean, my mama cooks stuff. I mean, you ever have squirrel fricassee? (laughs) The food, just unbelievable. The music, there's nothing like it. I mean, let's face it, Louisiana is the source of America's music. It always has been. My memories of growing up were, I hate to say it, music and food. And then all of a sudden, I discovered girls. <laughs> <laughs> and that really messed me up. You know? <laughs> Can you remember your most vivid memories of Mardi Gras as a young guy? Oh, yeah. I Yeah, I sure can. I was probably six years old or so, maybe seven. And uh, my father was a was a dentist, and he was the head of the State Dental Association back in the early 50s and all. And he would go to New Orleans for uh, conventions, dental conventions. He would always take my mother and me along with him, of course. And uh, I got to see my first Mardi Gras when I was maybe six or seven years old. And I'll tell you what happened. And this this left an indelible mark on me for all of my life. I got to meet Al Hurt, the great trumpet player. He was a he was a friend of mine all through the years. But when I was six or seven years old, he passed us on a float uh, riding in the Mardi Gras. And I was on the side of the road with my mother and daddy. And all of a sudden, here's Al Hurt. He's motioning to me. I had been introduced to him the night before by my doctor and some of his fellow dental uh, partners. And this guy's motioning to me. So here I go. I go toddling it out into the middle of the street, up to the rear end of the Mardi Gras float. And he reaches down and he hands me a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I was like six or seven years old. Of course, I was so happy. I didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, my mom was saying, get out of the street. Bring me that champagne. And so I brought my mom and daddy back to that champagne. And that was the first Mardi Gras I ever went to. Can you imagine the effect that had on me all of my life? <laughs> so a Mardi Gras lover for life. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been to, oh gosh, Paul, I've seen, oh, I didn't make every single Mardi Gras because I was traveling a lot, but I've seen 38 Mardi Gras, I believe. Wow. So, Bob, do you like beignets? Does a dog bark? Do you like king cake? Oh, I love king cake. In fact, I, I, I don't even mind getting the little plastic baby in the king cake because when you get that little baby in the king cake, you know, and you know this, you have to buy the next king cake. It doesn't matter to me if I get the little baby or not, but I love getting the little baby because I like to buy people king cake and watch their faces when they bite into it. It's great. And so we already know you like Louisiana cooking. Oh, yeah. What about those cocktails, the hurricanes? What about them? <laughs> 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 How, do you want, do you have one? Uh, we, can we get them flown in? The hurricane? I love the Pat O'Brien's hurricane. In fact, that's how we usually start our Mardi Gras morning. Did, did I tell you about that? No, let's let's hear about it. Yeah, this was kind of tradition with my friends and I through the years. 
the first thing you got to get up at five o'clock on Mardi Gras morning before you even get out of bed. You have a straight shot of Jack Daniels. Just boom. <laughs> well, that kind of gets your blood going, you know. And then you go down to Pat O'Brien's and you have as many hurricanes as they'll sell you, which on Mardi Gras Day, they'll sell you all you want to buy. <laughs> and then after you've had those, you barely are kind of getting ready for the day. And so you drop over by the portical at the rear of the French Quarter on Esplanade and you have yourself a monsoon. Now, buddy, if you think that a hurricane is potent, wait till you have a monsoon. And then after you've had that monsoon and all those hurricanes and that straight Jack Daniels, you're you're pretty much prepared for Mardi Gras Day. I like the way you think. If you can walk. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about this great music and culture that comes out of Louisiana? I've never been able to explain it. It's a funny thing, and people ask me about it all the time. And when you're born and raised in Louisiana, like, I was, and like so many of my friends, so many of the businessmen that I come in contact with, you know, you look at things like the culture, the heritage, you look at Mardi Gras, you look at the great music that comes out of there. And this is kind of sad to say, but most of the people born and raised in Louisiana just take it for granted. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like it's always been there. They've always seen it. They've always been around it. It's no big thing to them. But where it really becomes important, in my opinion, is that the words Mardi Gras and the words New Orleans, my goodness, those are global household words. I mean, I don't think there's anybody around the world, regardless of race, creed, color, language, that doesn't know Mardi Gras and New Orleans. I mean, they don't take it for granted. They treasure it. They will want it. They want to go there. I mean, I know lots of people that came to New Orleans to see Mardi Gras for the first time in their life. They never left New Orleans. <laughs> you just said global. So tell us, what exactly is this Mardi Gras Live, and how did this idea come to be? Paul, I've wanted to do this show for over 35 years. I had the idea back when I was talking and meeting with a great friend of mine. Bless his heart, he's an older gentleman now, but he's still kicking, and he's Mr. Mardi Gras, the great Blaine Kern Sr., and he kind of took me under his wing back in the 70s, and we became good friends, and uh, we would have breakfast, and we would talk. I learned so much from him, but I, I suggested to him about 35, 36 years ago, you know, I said, Blaine, we, we need to broadcast this live to the world and he didn't really think it was a good idea i mean he didn't want to hurt new orleans he didn't want to do anything to affect tourism or you know affect his his floats or anything which i never thought it would hurt him and i still don't and then of course as we went through the years and i i produced this darn show in my mind so many times i could probably do this show in my sleep it's it's basically giving people a true Mardi Gras experience, just like they would have if they were to come to New Orleans for the real Mardi Gras, except they're going to be able to experience it in high-definition television on their smart TVs, on their cell phones, on their computers, on their handheld devices, regardless of where they are in the world. And by the way, it's going to have a stereo audio soundtrack engineered and mixed by a five-time Grammy Award winner, David Farrell, who is in charge of our audio. But there's nothing like Mardi Gras in the world, and the best way to bring it to people is to them wherever they are in the world, and they will have a great experience. A scripted, controlled show featuring some of the great legends of Louisiana and New Orleans music. They'll see the food, they'll see the costumes, they'll see the floats. They can do everything but catch beads off of a float, and if they want to, they can order a Mardi Gras party pack, and we'll send them some New Orleans food mix and some hurricane mix and some and a king cake and a couple of masks and some beads, and they can have their own party in their home with their friends. So 
it's Mardi Gras come true. I mean, anybody in the world will be able to experience it. What do you want people who indulge in this, who experience this, what do you want them to take away from it? Man, I want them to have the time of their lives. I want them to hear that great music. I want them to see the greatest event known to man in America. I mean, you know, there's nothing like Mardi Gras. And people sometimes say, well, Bob, you know, what about Carnival down in Brazil? Hey, that's a whole different whole different story. Mardi Gras has been really in Louisiana and in New Orleans since the early 1700s. And I think you had mentioned to me earlier something about the fact that you could trace back Mardi Gras thousands of years. I mean, it goes back into pagan times, to be honest with you. And then, of course, the Catholic Church became involved. And in a sense of the word, Mardi Gras is really a religious celebration. But for two weeks in New Orleans, Louisiana, there is no other feeling, no other experience that anyone could have that even comes close to matching Mardi Gras. And that's what we're hoping to convey to the public around the world. And we hope at the end of the day, when they get ready to go to bed, that they've had a great time and that they know the true meaning of Mardi Gras and that they have experienced the music, the heritage, and above all, the culture. That's our dream. So what are the things that people need, the must-haves for a Mardi Gras experience, whether they're in New Orleans or they're having a house party and they're watching this? from home the first thing they need is the attitude of we're going to have a good time because that's what Mardi Gras is I mean it's a good time the second thing they need is they need their favorite cold drink <laughs> <laughs> you know kind of loosen up relax and if they don't like alcoholic drinks well whatever they want to have that's up to them I'm not going to question that they're in their own homes or they're on their cell phones so they can do what they want to do but they got to have an attitude, and the attitude is anything goes. I mean, anything. If they want to take off their clothes and dance naked around their living room, I want them to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. You know, that's what it is. Another important factor, Paul, a lot of people think, well, gee, Mardi Gras, it's uh, debauchery and sin, and it's crazy, and it's wild. Well, yeah, it is. But that's in certain parts of the city. Mardi Gras in New Orleans appeals from the age of four up to 104. You know, I mean, you go up St. Charles Avenue, you see kids sitting on their daddy's and mama's shoulders. They've got their own seats built for them on top of ladders where they can see the parades. The guys on those floats, when they see some kids, they try their best to get them a handful of beads because th those kids' faces just light up like it's Christmas morning when they catch Mardi Gras beads or, or if they got a Zulu coconut from King Zulu. Boy, that's a special prize. But Mardi Gras reaches a demographic that is unequaled in this world, in my opinion, from ages four, I mean, three or four, really, all the way up to 104 and above. I mean, everyone enjoys Mardi Gras. Everybody. So now a question about you. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is the best thing about being Bob Vernon? Well, first of all, at, at, at 67 years old, the best thing is that I'm still alive, buddy. <laughs> I thank the man upstairs for that every single morning. But to answer your question, I think the best thing about Bob Vernon is that I love people. I love people all around the world. I love Louisiana culture and heritage. I love Louisiana music like nobody alive. And I want people to know the culture and heritage of our great state down there, and particularly when it comes to Mardi Gras and Mardi Gras music. Pardon my, my bad language, but it's an old saying in New Orleans. There ain't nothing like it. <laughs> and it's true. It, there ain't nothing like it. I don't care where you go. I don't know what you do, care what you see, what city you go to around the world. They all have great festivals, and great celebrations and all. But, buddy, once somebody experiences Mardi Gras, they will always remember it. Even if Al Hurt isn't around to hand them a bottle of champagne when they're six years old. You know? <laughs> Bob, it's a pleasure. What are your parting words for anyone who's listening, wherever they are? Let's say les bon temps roulés. Let the good times roll. How did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> you money on it, right? <laughs> I know we'll be talking again. Bob, thank you very much. 
Paul, thank you. And listen, we will be talking again because, as I mentioned to you earlier, I want you to come down for the broadcast, and I want you to be on uh, with a lot of our great talent and our celebrity hosts. And I want you to interview as many of the music legends and the people involved as you can, man. You're a great interviewer, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I'll be there. Great. Thank you, Bob. Happy Mardi Gras, buddy. All right. Happy Mardi Gras.